So we are back here with another profile today guys, it is Nistro here and today I got you guys more phages which I did upload the um, Yu-Gi-Oh Pro Duels for yesterday and I did say I was going to do the dual video, uh, the deck profile um, yesterday but um, I got lazy. So uh, I didn't leave the deck profile at the end of the video so um, I guess it's like a fair trade. So. Starting off, this is a 44 card deck that I made myself, and uh, pretty much um, I just made it around uh, Pendulum Switch and uh, Duelist Alliance. Like once I realized that you could use Pendulum Switch with a Morphages, I was like, oh my, like it was just just a light bulb just went up, and I was like, oh my god, like you can actually do this. And then with the addition of Duelist Alliance in Maximum Crisis, um, it just makes the deck um, a whole lot more consistent because then you get more, easier access to your Pendulum Switch since it is searchable now. And you can also search your Pendulum Reborn, which is also a good thing. But, uh, yeah. So it's kind of funny that moving that uh, it took a TCG exclusive card to make a Morphages, like, playable. Because I feel like before, a Morphages, like, ever since they were released, they always had, like, something lacking um, about them. And uh, now that we have cards like... Uh, well, when we got Card Demise, it was like, it was, it was like, okay, we could play it, but, you know, like, the deck still kind of, like, um, was missing something that really made it more consistent, because, uh, you know, on the standby, like, at every standby phase, these, these guys have to tribute a monster to stay on, in the pendulum scale, and if you don't, then they get destroyed themselves, and, uh, the deck has a lot of flaws, and, um, a lot of contradictions in itself, and we're gonna have to go into that later. Um, but we're just going to start off with uh, one Goliath. So you see two Goliath here in the side deck, and uh, I was thinking since I'm playing triple Pendulum Switch, I could probably just play three Goliath and get away with it, because once I get just one Goliath and then I just Pendulum Switch it to your field or Pendulum Switch it to back into the Pendulum Zone uh, when, whenever I need, whenever need be, because he is a 2750 hitter that does have a whole uh, domain type effect, so it definitely is useful. Um, that you could just pendulum switch him any time, and the, he he's kind of like one of the like he he's like the the biggest guy in the deck, so it's nice that like he's easy to summon as well. Before um, Goliath was also running at one, like before pendulum switch came out, like you also ran Goliath at one, but he was kind of hard to bring out on the field. He's more something that you would pendulum reborn rather than like actually summon. Although you do like you would get like um, cards back. For pendulum summoning, uh, well, not pendulum summoning, tribute summoning him, because you couldn't pendulum summon him in this deck, even if you wanted to. Um, th this deck scales is only three to five. But for tribute summoning him, you could like either search or draw cards if you have a uh, infection or persona on the field. So uh, we'll definitely go more into that later. So yeah, uh, his pendulum effect is while you control a morphage monster, um, any card sent to graveyard is banished instead, except for morphage cards. And once we turn during the standby phase, tribute to one monster or destroy this card. So he's a macro cosmos while he's on the scale. Which is why he's so strong when you pendulum scale him. I mean, not pendulum scale, pendulum switch him. Because uh, when you pendulum switch him, and your opponent activates like a foolish burial or foolish burial goods, then that card that they mill gets banished. Or, you know, in the situation in my Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duels, uh, I pendulum switched him when they, when they activated the Grasslick Screener. So instead of milling 20 cards, they banished 20 cards from the top of their deck. And uh, those would have been real essential cards that they could have used. But unfortunately for them, um, Goliath was on the scale. And then, you know, like, the turn after. Like, right before the, right before the standby phase, right before you have to tribute. Um, you can just use Pendulum Switch. You, like, you can resolve Pendulum Switch before you resolve your Morphages in the standby phase. And so you just switch them over to the Monster Zone. It's, it's so convenient, and uh, it's it's pretty amazing, actually. Um, just be wary that when you're using Pendulum Switch on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, um, have it to always chain uh, being on, because if you have normal chain on, then uh, Pendulum Switch will lose a lot of its response timings, and um, you'll probably only get to, to activate uh, its effect when your opponent activates a card, which you don't want to happen, because there are some times where you want to like uh, uh, switch your monsters from uh, monster to Pendulum Zone, 
um, even like uh, outside of like um, chaining or anything like this and that. So like maybe during the standby phase, because I know for me, when I first use it, um, during the standby phase, I, I actually missed timing a few times. Well, not missed timing, but I didn't have always chain on a few times. So uh, it didn't like uh, give me a option to resolve it. So when you use it on Yu-Gi-Oh Pro, just just be wary of that. But uh, it, it it does still work if you put always chain on. So yeah. So next we have a double amorphage sloth. So sloth is a kind of like a mistake. Um, when you control the morphage monster, neither player can add cards from their deck to their hand except by drawing them. And then once we turn during your standby phase, trigger one monster to destroy this card. So uh, his pendulum effect is nice. The only problem is is that it also hinders you from searching so uh even your morphage infection because a lot of these amorphage cards says like you can't activate or do a certain thing except for amorphage cards but a sloth is like one of the only ones where he also hinders your your own infection so if he's on the scale just just don't like just take him out the scale as soon as possible if you're trying to use a uh, infection because uh he will not let you search while you have infection on board um and then his monster effect is just a domain. Uh, neither playing special monster from the extra deck except a morphage monster. So, yeah, these guys are pendulums, so it, it makes sense. Um, I remember when he first came out, and, he, and this guy is a secret. Rare. He's pretty much the the highest rarity of morphage monster. He, this guy was worth a lot because you could play him in like a lot of decks. He's pretty generic because he's just a level six pendulum. I know uh, magicians try to play him. Um, I don't know what what like. Uh, like now, if anybody will still actually play him, I doubt it, but he, he could still be a good side deck option for like other pendulum decks, just because he's he's like that, he has that generic quality to him. Goliath is more for something with um, bigger decks, more like blue eyes and all this and that. So uh, not as many decks could play him, but Sloth, he was a lot more generic, and I think that's why they made him secret. So um, in this, in this deck, the scales are only between 3 and 5, so your level 4s are the most crucial. Now, the level 4s kind of have the worst effects out of all of them. Um, well, maybe maybe not uh, Wrath, but uh, in Greed. Greed is okay. But, like, it, it's like they're, they're just here because their body is too tribute. Because you're, every single Morphage only has a scale between 3 and 5, so you can only Pendulum Summon uh, level 4 monsters, and... The morph that that makes the morphage level four monsters worth more than some of the other morphage monsters. So first off, we have pride, and pride is your anti effect damage. So if you're playing against chain burn, you can search pride, just put pride on the scale, and then you pretty much win because <laughs> you're not going to take any damage for the rest of the duel as long as pride is on the board. And um, for the lower level of morphage monsters, it's not just generic uh, domain. Um, they have to be either Pendulum Summoned or Flip Face Up to have the Domain Effect. So, and that's for everyone that's level 4 and lower, so just be wary of that. And that's all their monster effects, so from this point on, they only have different um, Pendulum Effects. And, you know, once we turn during your standby phase, Tribute a Monster or destroy this card. So, yeah, he's your anti-chain burn, but the reason you play 3 of him is because he is also your strongest Amorphage uh, level 4. So he has 1750 attack. And there's a lot of uh, cards that alter attack um, in this in this deck, so uh, it, it definitely isn't a problem for you to uh, to for him to, to be the one to hit over monsters. So Wrath is uh, kind of like your Master Restrict. So I control the Morphage monster. Neither player can tribute monsters except for Morphages. So um, that is pretty good actually um, against like decks like True Dracos. Um, but he only stops them from trading monsters. He doesn't say that they can't tribute summon. He just says they can't tribute monsters. And the problem is that true Dracos can also tribute their spell and trap cards for a tribute summon. So it kind of gets around them. But uh, if you have other more phages, like there, there, are, there are more ways to stop uh, your opponent. But uh, yeah, uh, he's your second strongest more phage. He has only sixteen fifty. But um, yeah, uh, he's he's someone you're gonna summon in attack mode more than put on the scale, you, you're probably not gonna put it on the scale like in general, um, unless you know like your matchup. Which is kinda like what I like about this deck is that you can kinda like mix and match like what you need. Like 
if you like if you don't feel safe playing like all the low level morphages since they can't be pendulum summoned you can just side in what you need and what you don't because uh this deck is like one of those decks where um you, you won't need every single morphage but you you kind of need to see them as soon as possible just to get going so it definitely is helpful um envy i feel is the worst morphage out of all of them and simply because i feel like his effect isn't um isn't uh, applicable enough. So, while you control an Amorphage monster, neither player can activate cards or effects as a chain link to or higher. Simply meaning that they can't chain to anything that you control, and your cards can't chain to anything that they activate, which is kind of like a 50-50 in like uh, both directions. It's, it's may, maybe good against Paleozoics, because Paleozoics re re require um, chaining to like get their board going. So if you're facing Amorphages, you could probably put in like a second Envy. But if you're facing like other decks, there like there aren't many decks that like essentially rely on being like uh, ch like chaining their cards. You know, like again, chain burn, but you have uh, pride just to stop any effect damage, so that also just stops that. Um, at least you can't get solemn striked <laughs> while you control this uh, envy. Well, I mean, they can strike your pendulum summon, they just can't strike monster effects. But none of your monster effects activate anyway, so it's like it's not really that big. It really isn't that big of a deal. Um, but he is level 4, and he does have a quite a big booty, 2050. So we do play one of him, and uh, you know, he has a whole pendulum or flip face up thing. So he's one of the ones where you would more of have the flip face up effect rather than pendulum summon effect. But if you do pendulum summon him, then uh, that is a good thing as well. Um, and Amorphage Greed as well, so uh, he stops trap cards. So while you control a Morphage monster, neither player can activate trap cards or their effects except for Amorphage cards. Um, so just be careful when you have Greed on the, uh, on the board because um, you kind of do rely on some of these trap effects some of the time, like Pendulum Switch and uh, Oscillating Vibration. So if you, but it does stop your opponent's trap cards as well. So if you feel you can push for game and you don't need your trap cards, that's when uh, you, you, just, you keep Greed on the field. But if you feel like you need to push for game and you need to use your trap cards, then let Greed get destroyed or destroy it um, using something else and then like put another um, Amorphage on scale. So just be careful. Um, and then, you know, the whole Pendulum Summoner foot face up. He has 1950 defense, so 100 less than uh, Envy. So Lechery, Lechery is probably my favorite one because he has the best effect. While you control the Morphage monster, neither player can activate spell cards or their effects except for Morphage cards. And then once we turn during this time, my face tribute monster or destroy this card. So, um, yeah, a Morphage is kind of like, uh, like they, like they all have this, uh, repetitive, um, effect of, you know, tributing and everything this and that, but Lechery is the one that stops, like, most decks because a lot of decks will focus on their spell card. So, so Lechery is kind of the one that you want to see the most. And uh, unfortunately, in the way that I play the deck, there's really no way to search him. Um, like, first turn. Like, uh, I remember when Morphages first came out, people were playing a Drake Connection, um, which is a very old spell card um, from Galactic Overlord, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So what it does is you reveal a dragon type monster in your hand and add a dragon type monster from your same with the same level from your deck to your hand, then shuffle the revealed monster into the deck. So you pretty much uh, you reveal one, you send you add one with the same level, and then you send a revealed one back, which would only be good if you draw into gluttony. So it's kind of like 50-50. since all these guys are dragons too. So if you if you ever find any good generic dragon support, you could probably splash it in this deck, maybe side deck. But yeah, um, he's kind of like the anti-spell of the deck, the Imperial Order. Um, so the thing is that he doesn't um, stop cards, like uh, stop continuous effects. So if your opponent already has a spell card out that has a continuous effect, then uh, he will uh, negate that. But he does not stop your infection, which is your most important spell card. And your field spell, Amorphous Perf uh, Persona, um, he stops you, so make sure you activate Persona before activating Lechery. But um, Persona does have an effect that when you tribute an Amorphage, you get to draw a card. And when you have Lechery on the field, um, 
Lechery would normally would be able to stop an effect like that, but the way that Persona works uh, is worded, it doesn't actually activate. Uh, the the effect to, to to draw your card doesn't activate. It doesn't start a chain, so um, technically it is allowed to uh, bypass Lechery's um, no spell cards clause. So it's it's very nice how the deck synergizes like that. That that's one of the, the small things in the deck that I think that they did well. Um, yeah, and uh, Gluttony is uh, another good one. He's another level two though. The the, the level twos are probably the two best ones that you want to see. The problem is is that they're both scale five, so while you have them both on the field, you won't be able to pendulum summon. But uh, the good thing is that uh, greed is a scale three, so uh, if you have greed, so you can have greed and lechery on the field at the same time, and you can stop all spells and traps except for morphine spells and traps. Or you can have lechery and gluttony on the field at the same time. You can stop all spells and monsters, which pretty much stops just about every deck, but um, you wouldn't be able to pendulum summon. So. It's really how you take on it. And uh, yeah, so your opponents can't activate their monster effects except for a monster. Oh, monster f monsters in general cannot activate their effects except for morphage monsters. And you know during your standby phase, you tribute. Uh, 1850 booty. He's definitely not bad in defense. And Lechery is a level 2 with 1350 attack, so I guess it's decent. But uh, you, you probably, these, these are the two that you are going to put on scale. Like, you're not going to put these in attack mode on the field. Like, unless you, like, have to, like, pendulum switch them just to save them, that's when you would, uh, that's when they would be, that, that should be the only time they're on the field when, when you pendulum switch them. Or unless you, you literally have nothing else to do. But at that point, if you have no other choice than to set a lechery or a gluttony, you're probably going to lose anyway. Because <laughs> your opponent might be able to uh, push past your board, like, real quick. If these, like, if you have to rely on setting uh, Lechery or, or Gluttony. Yeah, so let's get into spell cards. The first one is being Duelist Alliance, again, which came out in Maximum Crisis. So if a card is in the Pendulum Zone, you add one Pendulum, mo uh, pendulum, pendulum Monster or one Pendulum spell, spell or Trap card from your deck to your hand. And you can activate one Duelist Alliance per turn. And uh, as I said earlier, the only ones you play are Pendulum Reborn, which normally you would play a two, but I was already over 40, so I didn't want to um, take too much of a chance with that. And uh, Pendulum Switch, which is kind of like the engine of the, well, not really engine, but like the, one of the best cards in this deck. Uh, so Triple Card Demise, um, you don't really do, like, this is very good early game. Because you don't really do a lot early game. All you do is like activate in a morphage and normal summon. So having a card that lets you just draw more cards for free, pretty much. Uh, this this deck does waste its hand a lot. So um, being so you pretty much you'll be able to draw at least two to three cards every time uh, you activate demise. So it's very nice. Um, just remember your opponent takes no damage the turn you activate it, and you can't special summon. And uh, during the end phase, in case you have any leftover cards, they're going to get sent to the graveyard. But you know that's that's to be expected. So pot of riches, this is a, this is one of those cards where I I've always had trouble uh, deciding the ratio. I don't know where I, whether I should run one or two. Um, most times, I think I probably want to use two just because I want to keep the deck going. But like most, there are times where I just feel like okay, I I should probably only use one. Um, if this thing was searchable with Duelist Alliance, I think it would be better. If it had Pendulum in the name, like Pot of Pendulum or something, Pendulum Pot. I don't know. But yeah. So he shuffles three pendulum monsters into the deck from your graveyard or face up from your action deck and then draw two cards. You cannot special summon to turn your activity card except by pendulum summoning, which isn't a problem in this deck. You, you don't mind pendulum summoning. And uh, shuffling three, I think, is going to take a while. Um, but if your low level ones or your high level ones gets, uh, get tributed or like they destroy themselves, um, that's when you can use them for Pot of Riches. Or if your opponent like negates one of your Pendulum Summons, um, you can just Pot of Riches and then like just draw two off of, you know, from send them back from Grave. Because, you know, most, like there's nothing inside of this archetype that would send them to Grave. But if your opponent ever makes you send a Morphages to the Graveyard, just send them back automatically because you don't want them in the Graveyard. In the extra deck, they can be kind of useful, but in the Graveyard, they're just dead. So, always have that Pot of Riches ready. So next we play one scapegoat, and you're probably wondering why. Um, 
So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, every Amorphage has a cost during the stamina phase where you have to tribute a monster to keep it on scale or else they destroy themselves. So a card like Scapegoat is uh, very useful for uh, protecting your scales. Not, even, not only protecting your life points, but protecting your scales as well. From protecting your scales from being destroyed uh, from themselves. It saves them from themselves. So uh, uh, when you use a card like Scapegoat, you can't use them for Goliath or for Sloth. But um, Scapegoat uh, can be used for uh, saving yourself pretty much. That's, that's really all you use it for. And uh, when Link Format uh, comes around, I think you might want to run multiple copies because this is a Pendulum deck, and uh, Mrs. Radiant would be a nice touch in this deck since uh, there may be times you want to bring back uh, Pendulum Monsters from the extra deck, like maybe more than one, or um, you know, if, if you just want the boost from Mrs. Radiant, you can just use two tokens from Scapegoat, so yeah. But uh, just, just be wary that you don't have a a morphage on the field because then you wouldn't be able to summon Mrs. Radiant. But yeah, during during link format, I think you'd you'd want to run more than one scapegoat. But for now, you can just get, uh, keep it at one. Um, if you want to see it more often, you can actually just play two. Honestly, um, it won't hurt. But I was already over forty cards, so I didn't want to take any more risk than I needed to. So triple a morphage infection. This card is the best a morphage card out of all of them. Like there's no debating this. So. All the Morphage monsters on the field gain 100 attack and defense for each Morphage card on the field. So, like, already. So if you have this and any other Morphage, the Morphage gains 200. And uh, the effects can stack. So if you have two of them, they'll gain 200 for each Morphage card in the field. Three of them, 300 for each Morphage card in the field. And uh, when you really get those big boards, this this card really helps because um, your, your Morphage monsters with zero attack or with low attack, like uh, Lechery, uh, will actually be able to be a threat because um, then because they can gain attack so they can actually attack and do damage and destroy monsters by battle and not just be sitting there with useless zero attack and um, so it's a uh, it's utter effect is that if a monster in your hand or you control is tributed or destroyed by battle or by card effect you know what you, you can actually mix this with true dracos <laughs> you can mix you can make a Morphage True Draco if, if you wanted to. Um, if a monster in your hand or uh, you control is tributed or destroyed by battle by card effect, you can add one a Morphage card from your deck to your hand. And you can only use this effect of a Morphage infection once per turn. Even if you have multiple copies, it's only one infection can activate per, per turn. Which is the sad part. The good part being um, that it's any monster. So when any monster you control is destroyed. So um, that does allow you to have an option to like mix up decks with like um maybe something else as i said true dracos you could probably try true draco a morphage but uh the problem being is that a lot of the cards in this deck like don't really have the synergy to mix like like there's like there's already like not enough synergy in the archetype for the deck to barely be able to stand on its two feet so i feel like mixing it with another deck may not be a good option but uh it's always there in case you want to try it so Amorpho uh, Amorphous Persona um, is a field spell. Uh, you notice that I don't play terraforming. Why? Because this field spell is kind of like, uh, it's not that great. I think it's decent, but I think it's it's just like there, like just in case I have it. Like, well, let me tell you what I mean. So all Amorphage monsters on the field gain 300 attack and defense. So, you know, I, as I said before, there are a lot of cards in this deck that do shift attack and defense. So don't worry about your Morphages being too weak. Like, you see no extra deck here, so you're wondering how you may be able to beat over certain things. Don't worry about it. Uh, Infection and Persona got you covered, all right? You, you want to gain attack, you're going to gain quite a decent amount of attack if you have these two on board. Um, so, here's now here's the juicy part of the card. So up to twice per turn, if an Amorphage monster you control is tributed, you draw one card. Now, the beautiful thing about this is that it doesn't have to be uh, for the pendulum effect, so um, cards like so any any amorphage would tribute a monster while it's on the scale during your standby phase. So that's already one card. So if you have two amorphages on scale and two level fours on board, you tribute both of them. You draw two. You get an a search for infection, and main phase one you get the pendulum summon them back. It, it sounds amazing, right? It kind of is. Uh, not only that, but like in case you only have one pendulum scale. 
um, you tribute one, you draw one. And maybe after that, if you tribute summon, you still get to draw a card after you tribute summon. So uh, the, it, it definitely has a... It, it's very nice that it lets you draw cards for tributing. So it kind of makes up for that one flaw in the deck. The only problem is, is that this is not an Amorphage card. I think if this was an Amorphage card, I think I wouldn't mind it. Because then you can search it with Infection, and Lettry wouldn't stop you from activating it. But um, I, I think... It is still a good card uh, in general, but I think it would have been better if it was a Morphage card. Uh, but being able to draw for this deck's downfalls is always a good thing, so yeah. Uh, double Quaking. Uh, this deck does kind of need defense at times. Uh, I remember when people used to use Drowning Mirror Force, and uh, although I don't disagree with it, um, I, I do feel like there are times where your opponent will have a monster that's stronger than yours, or maybe you have like Scapegoat or something. If you have like a token out, uh, you may want to protect it because you want to keep your um, scales safe. Uh, so having a card like Quaking where you can activate it anytime, I, I do still believe this is the, the best Mirror Force before Link Format. Link Format is going to be debatable whether this is still the best Mirror Force or not in my eyes. But right now, I, still be, I do still believe Quaking is the best Mirror Force. So um, definitely, I would definitely... Uh, you can even play a third one if you want, but I just keep it at two. Just, you know, just be careful when you have greed on, on scale, you won't be able to activate it, but I don't think you would activate greed if you have uh, Quaking. So, Pendulum Reborn, it just specializes a Pendulum from your extra deck or your graveyard. Most times, it's going to be Goliath, if you have Goliath, but if not, then, um, I don't know, maybe a Sloth. Uh, just remember that it's searchable by Duelist Alliance, so in case you already have a Pendulum Switch and you need, and you know, you, you don't want another one, you just search over Pendulum Reborn. So next we have, uh, Echo, uh, Oscillation. So this is actually one of the, um, one of the cards I really like. Um, you could play multiple copies of this, it's just, again, I was over 60, I was over 40, I said over 60, I was over 40, so I want to be minimalistic with some of my ratios. And, um... What it does is that once per turn, you can target one card in your Pendulum Zone, destroy it, and then draw one card. You can only use this effect of Echo uh, Oscillation first turn, or once per turn. I said first turn. It's a trap card. <laughs> that would even make sense. So, uh, you targeted, um, so if you have no monsters left on your board, uh, standby phase, before you resolve your Morphage, you can resolve uh, Echo uh, Oscillation, and then just pop that Morphage and draw a card. Um, you can definitely play multiple copies. You can play two if you want. But uh, just make sure that you don't run out of, of Amorphages. And understand that when your Amorphages are, are, are destroyed, um, Infection doesn't activate. If, if they're destroyed on scale, Infection doesn't activate. So just be careful about that. You're still going to draw a card, but Infection won't activate. So, uh, yeah. Next, we have a Amorphage Lysis. And this is uh, the card that stops your or hinders your opponent. Because uh, all monsters on the field, except for Amorphage monsters, lose 100 attack and defense for each Amorphage card on the field. Now, I remember when I, one time when uh, I was first trying out the deck, I was trying out different things. Um, I teched in a copy of Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, because these guys are all dragons. And uh, it didn't really work out that well. <laughs> because of Lysis. Because Lysis stops, like, lowers the attack of all monsters on the field. And not just um, a more phages. It would have been nice if it was your opponent only, but uh, you know that's one of the flaws in this deck. Is it's one of the things you have to take into mind. But uh, if a card in your pendulum zone is destroyed, so any card in your pendulum zone, it's not it doesn't it doesn't have to be an amorphage. Um, you can place an amorphage monster, uh, amorphage pendulum monster from your deck in your pendulum zone, and you go and use this effect once per turn. So that that even applies to when a amorphage just uh, destroys itself. So like let's say. You have like a lechery and you don't have any monsters left. So you activate Lysis, lechery pops itself, and then you have that new Amorphage Pendulum monster. Now, that Pendulum monster still has to resolve its effect. So if you still have no other way to pop um, that or to save that Pendulum monster, like the Tribute monster, or to Pendulum Switch or to Echo Oscillation, then that monster is still destroyed. But if you do, then you can probably do some shenanigans with it. Like um, what I did is uh, I intentionally let one of my uh, Amorphage Pendulum monsters get destroyed, and then I put Goliath on scale. And after putting Goliath on scale, I activated a Pendulum Switch and just special summon Goliath. And then that's it, main phase one, you know? 
So it definitely does have a lot of uses. Uh, I remember what I used to do is uh, I, I used to like just let one of my Amorphage Predator monsters get destroyed on scale and then just put one of the Amor level 4 Amorphages on scale and then let that pop itself as well so that during my main phase I, I have more monsters to Pendulum Summon so I have more of a defense, you know. Like, Lysis makes all your opponents mon or all monsters on the field lose 100 attack and defense for um, each Amorphage card on the field. Now, you're not playing any non amorphage monster, so it's going to be your opponent only, pretty much. And Scapegoat has zero attack anyway. So, it, so all your opponent's monsters are going to lose 100 for each amorphage card on the field, which can also stack, just like Infection. So, if you have two of them, they lose 200 for each monster on the field. But if you have a mixture of Infection and Lysis, it is actually going to be pretty strong, because not only are you going to gain, your opponent's going to lose as well. So, and with the field spell, it definitely helps that you're also going to gain an extra 300 attack and defense. And all these cards affect attack and defense. It's not just attack, it's not just defense, it affects both. So, um, it definitely is uh, very useful for getting over cards. Like, even Super Heavy Samurais, you know, like, they have big beaters with, like, 38 defense, like, 3,000 defense. Like, <laughs> you can probably get over a few Super Heavy Samurais just because of uh, how the lowering cards in this deck works. Unless they have a... So Buster, um... The, the, the hand trap one that doubles their defense. And j j just be aware of that one. But if you have gluttony, they won't be able to activate it. So, yeah. So now we get into the best card in the deck, Pendulum Switch. This is the card I remade the deck for because I remember making the deck before, but I never really saw how it, it was good. So you target one card in your Pendulum Zone, special summon it. Or you can target one Pendulum Monster in your Monster Zone and place it in your Pendulum Zone. In Amorphages, this is probably the, uh, like a godsend because of how well it synergizes with the entire archetype. Um, like you need a Pendulum monster in your Pendulum zone, just put it on there. If, if you like, uh, you know your opponent is going to play a whole bunch of um, spell cards, but you know you kind of want to set this Lechery for defense, and then you see them activate something like Pot of Duality. You just you, you Pendulum switch it to. Uh, your pendulum zone. If you're if you see your opponent um, activate like Rhoda, and you have Sloth on your board, you pendulum switch it to the pendulum zone. Or um, if you see your opponent activate Instant Fusion and you have like a Goliath or Sloth in your pendulum zone, you just pendulum switch it into the main monster zone. Uh, they just paid a thousand for nothing, you know. So it definitely is useful. And during the standby phase as well, you don't have any monsters to tribute. You activate Pendulum Switch, just special summon the back from the Pendulum Zone. You no longer have to worry about your Morphage monsters getting destroyed because you don't have uh, a monster to tribute thanks to Pendulum Switch. Pendulum Switch allows you just to freely switch them back and forth so you don't have to worry about them getting destroyed. Just remember, you resolve Pendulum Switch in the Pendulum Zone. I mean, in the Pendulum Zone. You, pause, you resolve Pendulum Switch during the standby phase once per turn before um, you resolve one of your Morphages and you just special summon it. Or if you want to special summon one to save the other, and then maybe if you have an affection on the field, you get to search, or maybe you have persona on the field, you get to search and you get to draw. Uh, just remember that you would draw before you search if you do that um, with like persona and infection, you would draw before you search because persona doesn't activate, so it's pretty much like automatic. So it's like you just automatically draw. And then infection, infection will start a new chain. Like it'll be, it'll be a chain link one. So yeah. Um, just be, just remember, you can only use one pendulum switch effect per turn, and only once that turn. Um, so, uh, if you put one from your monster to your pendulum zone, uh, that's it, you know, for the entire turn. Um, and then next turn you can put it back, but, you know, it's like once per turn, you can only do it one way. It's, it's, it's like a one-way ticket each turn. So, just be wary of that. Lastly, we have two Solemn Strike. Um, just to finish this deck off, um, we you do see that there's triple gluttony here. Um, gluttony does stop monster effects, but there are times that A, you won't have gluttony all the time, and B, uh, Solemn Strike gets rid of the monster. You know, a lot of the, like, the thing about Amorphages is that they're all, like, floodgates, and they don't actually, like, stop your opponent from getting cards. So, you, so your opponent can still have card advantage while you still have all these Amorphages, and even though you can still beat them just because they can't activate any of that stuff, just remember that they still have that card advantage. And, like, sometimes they may be able to come back simply because if they get rid of your Amorphage, like, if they can get rid of your Amorphages for even, like, one turn, 
they they may just have like the right uh, properties to uh to go to to go off and uh that amorphage would have been important but with a card like strike where it's like okay um you can actually uh like destroy the monster that you negate it, it actually makes it a whole lot better because then I mean, I don't need to explain how good Psalm Strike is. I mean, I, I'm, I'm I'm sure at this point, everybody knows how good Psalm Strike is. But it's just, uh, remember that your Morphages don't always get rid of the problem. They just stop it from happening. So, and they can only stall for so long. Uh, do I think this deck will ever be meta? The thing is, is that I, I can probably see someone taking this to, to an event. Like, maybe not this exact build. Um, but I can see someone taking a build of a Morphage to an event because of Pendulum Switch. I don't know how good they'll do. Um, they're definitely going to catch their opponents off guard. Because <laughs> nobody's going to expect this deck if somebody brings it to an event. But uh, it definitely does have a lot of uh, a, a lot of power. And it, it's just, it, it's all like in reserves because it, it, it just, the deck can't have it all at once. It, it's just the deck isn't consistent enough to like get everything that it needs um, all the time. And you know, you can side deck switch ratios, all this and that, but at the end of the day, this deck still just have a lot of problems that Pendulum Switch cannot fix. Um, but thanks to Pendulum Switch, I, I do believe that this deck just became a whole lot better and you may just see it a whole lot more, so. Yeah, I guess that's it for now. Uh, extra deck, you don't need an extra deck. Um, in, in all honesty, you really don't. Uh, your level fours, you kind of want to keep them. And uh, now that Pendulum switches out, you don't have to worry about getting like big monsters on the field anytime because you just bring out Goliath anytime and he'll be all right. Or uh, you just bring out like a Sloth anytime, you know. Uh, you can probably play Domain in the side deck if you want, but like all your Morphages do that anyway. So if there are any cards that like benefit from you not having an extra deck, like maybe a few modern cards, I will probably look at, uh, take a look at a few of those later. You can probably try uh, teching those as well. Um, they may not work, but you know, um, it's just worth a shot. Uh, maybe during link format you can play an extra deck because of uh, Scapegoat. And uh, Mrs. Radiant will allow you to pendulum summon two monsters instead of just one, because the way the extra monster zone works. Um, you won't be able to, sp to Pendulum Summon one monster at a time. Or if you Pendulum were born, um, your Goliath, you'd have to have a, f a free um, Link Point or uh, your extra monster zone open. So just be wary of that. But other than that, yeah, I guess that's it for this deck. I, I really did enjoy playing this deck. Uh, it's probably something I may pick up in real life. The thing is, is that you're probably going to need um, Demises more than a lot of these things. I mean, you could play like Pot of Dualities in like exchange for a demise but like nothing gets you as much advantage as demise because demise is like a plus two if you activate it at the right time at the minimum you should activate it when it's a plus one but it can be a plus it has the potential to be a plus two and you get two more cards or three more like three fresh new cards uh from your deck um and then with duelist alliance and all this and that it definitely works out and uh, I don't think it hurts that this deck is 44 cards. You can probably lower some of the ratios. Like, I don't think you need three Lysis. You can cut this down to two. You can cut Riches down. Uh, maybe one of the Field Spell. Um, and Envy, maybe? Because you don't need Envy. I, Envy is like, you, you don't need him. He's just in the Morphage, so, so you play him. Um, so just be, be wary of that. But, uh, yeah, um... This was Nisho here giving you guys a deck profile of Amorphages. Um, we'll be doing more deck profiles soon. See you guys later. Peace.